How you going? In this video I'd like to share the very best, in my opinion, list of immersive and lore friendly mods for Dragon's Dogma 2 to make the game more challenging, combat more lethal and exploration more rewarding. Together with some quality of life mods I find absolutely necessary for better immersion. All the while keeping the vanilla integrity of the game intact. Also I have a Dragon's Dogma 2 overlooked mechanics, secrets and details playlist. It has 5 videos at the moment, check them out if you haven't yet. The link is in the description. So. Modding Dragon's Dogma 2 is pretty easy actually. You need to download a few things from Nexus first, Reframework, XYZ API and Fluffy Mod Manager. With these installed you're good to go. All the links together with a step-by-step -step guide on how to install the tools will be in the description. Check it out if you need it. The first mod I'd like to talk about is called Wild Loot. This mod takes nearly every piece of gear you can buy in shops and hand places them into various chests out in the wild. I think the fact that you can buy pretty much all the best gear in the shops makes exploration in Dragon's Dogma 2 a way less rewarding experience. And Wild Loot aims to fix that. With it installed you have to explore every single cave to you know slowly build your gear collection. Obviously there's no reason to install it in the middle of your playthrough or during the new game plus when you have everything you need and it's all maxed out <laughs> unless you're ready to throw it out. So consider using wild loot if you're starting a fresh new playthrough. Number 9. Stop selling yourself. This one's pretty simple. It disables wandering pawns forced dialogues. Arisen. It doesn't remove the pawns from the game, they still walk around, they still fight monsters and you can hire them if you want to. They just stop asking to be hired. I guess the original intention was to show how everyone's excited about the new Arisen and how they all want to hang out with you, but quite frankly it can be very annoying. A must have mod. A quick tip for those who are on consoles by the way. Wandering pawns and any other NPCs won't start talking to you if you have your weapons out. Hey. Number 8. Carry Me Senpai. This mod allows you to indefinitely carry your pawns around and also toggle a bridal carry animation for your high affinity pawn. It just doesn't feel right, you know, to angrily grab your pawn when you have high affinity with them, like high enough to trigger all the sweet dialogue lines smiling and blushing. This mod has a few settings that can be accessed via reframe work where you can toggle struggle animation, bridal style animation and set to use bridal animation only for your high affinity pawn. Not a big deal for some people I guess, it literally has zero impact on gameplay but I find this mod crucial for immersion and RP. Number 7. Disable Speech Bubbles. Pretty straightforward. This mod disables obtrusive speech bubbles that appear above NPCs and pawns when they talk without having to disable subtitles. It's just a small thing but I find this mod crucial as well. It just makes the game so much cleaner. Next up I have better item descriptions and it does exactly what you think it does. It adds better descriptions for all consumables and gear in the game. For example with this mod we can learn that a rotten apple restores 40 health and adds poison status whereas a ripened apple restores 200 HP. And same goes for all weapons and armor. Though knowing how much health, I don't know, a fine meat Robert restores is not exactly immersive so I usually use this mod to optimize my builds and prepare better for my adventures ahead. Which is very important, especially when you're using difficulty mods we'll talk about later in the video. So this one's optional. Next up at number 5 I have a better UI series of mods. These are completely optional as well and of course it's just a matter of preference. There's a whole bunch of them in the series, check them all out to see if you like them. I personally use this one, informative icons potions. This one adds little icons next to potions and grimoires to make them more distinguishable. And this one, better map icons. That replaces vanilla icons on your map with more colorful ones. Again to make them more distinguishable. Like I said, there's a bunch of them in the series, I'll leave links in the description for you to check them all out. Number 4. AI Rings. This one swaps out repetitive vanilla ring icons with the AI generated ones. Again a simple small mod that makes a big difference in my opinion. The vanilla ring icons indeed are very repetitive and sometimes it's really hard to find that one specific ring you're looking for and it's pretty cool that all the new ring icons look like they do belong in the game. And now we move on to the most interesting mods on the list. Boop. 
Number 3. Random Encounters This mod completely overhauls the encounters in the game, but the coolest thing about it is that it's fully customizable. First of all, there's a boss probability slider that affects the probability of appearance for both daytime and nighttime bosses. When I'm using this mod, I usually go for 3 to 5%. I find it the most balanced and fair. And with this setting, you would encounter much more bosses than you usually do in the vanilla game. And on top of that, there are these drop downs for further boss pool customization daytime, nighttime, and special bosses. You can even add Grigori, Sphinx, Medusa, or a Perginer Dragon to your pool if you like to make them randomly spawn out in the wilds. <laughs> Note though that for all the changes you make to kick in, you have to rest at an inn. And if you are curious, this is what boss probability set to 100% looks like. The only problem I have with this mod, since it's basically an enemy randomizer, is that it sometimes ruins the immersion by placing irrelevant monsters to certain places. For example, Saurians usually hang out near water, and it just feels weird to encounter them out in the woods or in like misty marshes, right? Also, encountering a drake in a narrow passageway inside a small cave is a probability too. I'm not criticizing the mod, by the way, by no means. It does exactly what it says it does, and it's fantastic. Kudos to the author. There is an alternative to Random Encounters mod though, it's called New Game Plus Epic Encounters. And the author of this one adds handcrafted new challenging encounters into the game. I personally recommend checking them both out to see which one works better for you. And number two, Monster in Fighting. I'll just read the description of this mod from the mod page. Make enemies fight like it's Doom too. That's pretty much it, it's a reframework script that makes enemies get angry at each other for accidentally hitting one another. And don't worry it doesn't make the game easier, quite on the contrary, it can add a lot of flavor to your encounters since the mod is fully customizable. For example, the Doom style option means that enemies will retaliate against different types of enemies and free for all means enemies will attack anyone who hits them enough. You can customize enemies attitude towards the attacker, how angry they get from being hit, set the amount of time they remain angry at the attacker, etc, etc. It is a sick mod that adds flavor to your encounters, making them more unique and unpredictable. I strongly recommend checking it out. And finally, number one, Custom difficulty tweaks, arguably the best mod ever made for Dragon's Dogma 2. It allows you to customize everything in terms of difficulty. Damage taken, damage received, loss gauge accumulation, healing received, critical damage multiplier, stagger, experience gains, everything. It even lets you tweak the in-game economy balance, buy and sell prices for, you know, everything, materials, gear, curatives camping kits. Though I strongly recommend checking out presets first, this mod has a few presets, and then customize them individually. Thankfully there is an option to save your custom presets and load them back whenever you need them. It is a fantastic mod, it's a must have, and it can help you craft your own hard mode for Dragon's Dogma 2. Also it works perfectly with other mods on the list. I'm doing a new run right now with all gear and materials in shops set to be like 10 times more expensive, and together with wild loot mod that removes almost all the gear from the shops. It really puts me on the spot. I have to go out to find, you know, new clothes for me and my pawn. But then upon entering the very first cave, I'm getting attacked by a wog. It really brings the sense of danger back into the game and makes it exciting again, despite, you know, me knowing pretty much everything about it. So many thanks to all the mod authors and the modding community in general for keeping the game alive. I'll keep on checking Nexus for more interesting mods, maybe I'll make a part 2 at some point. Or maybe you'll be interested in visual mods list, let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe and thank you very much for watching, see you in the next one.